Ooh, the CELPIP exam. <sighs> the CELPIP exam. I have made so many videos about the CELPIP exam and I've written three books. Have you seen all my videos and have you been using my books to study? I hope so. I hope they're helping you. Hey, I'll put the link to my CELPIP video playlist down there in the description in case you haven't seen all my videos on the CELPIP exam. I've taught so many different things about speaking, reading, listening, writing. Well, today I was thinking about something that I think might help you on the exam. I haven't talked about this in any of my previous videos, at least I don't think I have. Maybe I just forgot, okay? And that is train of thought. Train of thought. Have you ever heard this before? What is a train of thought? Well, a train of thought is several thoughts that are related to each other, okay? They're connected, just like a train, like a chugga 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 choo choo, that kind of train. The train, there are cars connected to each other. Well, a train of thought is similar to that. It's a bunch of thoughts that are connected to each other that are going in the same direction. They're going in the same direction direction. Okay, let's take a look at an example. This woman says, I stopped eating meat two years ago. I felt a lot healthier when I gave up meat. You should definitely try it. Okay, so this is an example of a train of thought. There are three thoughts here, right? The first thought is, I stopped eating meat two years ago. Okay, then the second thought is I felt a lot healthier when I gave up meat. And the third thought is you should definitely try it. Try what? Well, try giving up meat. Giving up means to stop eating meat. Okay, so she's saying that you should definitely try giving up meat. I guess becoming a vegetarian or something. Are you a vegetarian or a vegan? A vegan is a person who doesn't eat any animal products, even honey, because honey is made from bees, right? So vegans don't even eat honey. Okay, anyway, so this is an example of a train of thought. Now, let's imagine that she said, you should definitely eat meat. You should definitely eat meat. Well, that would be a bit confusing, right? because it, it wouldn't match with these two thoughts. It would be out of place, right? It would be confusing. So then you could tell her, I don't follow your train of thought. I don't follow your train of thought. That means I'm a bit confused. Okay. Don't means can't. I can't follow your train of thought. I cannot follow your train of thought. You're, you're confusing me. I, I don't see the, the pattern here, right? Because it doesn't make sense. The last, the third thing didn't make sense, right? So the train of thought was, was confusing. Okay, so right now I'm going to take a look at a, a sample question from my newest book called Selpip Reading Practice. Hey, thanks to everyone who has bought my book. I hope it's helpful to you. I hope my videos are helpful to you. I just I just want you to pass the Selpip test and forget about it because I know how stressful tests can be. So I'm trying to help you. I hope you find these things helpful. Okay, so the question we're going to look at is task two. Task two, now there are four tasks on the reading test, right? There are four tasks. The second task is reading to apply a diagram. So you're going to see some sort of visual information, a diagram or something over here on the left side, and then you're going to see the questions here on the right side. 
Okay, so let's take a look at what this diagram says. Okay, it says find the right career at Markland Polytechnic. Markland, hey, that's me. <laughs> Markland Polytechnic. What is a polytechnic? Have you ever heard that word before? A polytechnic is basically a college. A college. It's a post-secondary institution. A post-secondary institution, right? After you finish high school and you want to keep studying, then you need to go to a post-secondary institution. You could go to a college, a university, or a polytechnic. Actually, here in Calgary, there's something called SAIT Polytechnic. SAIT stands for Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. SAIT. And I went to SAIT Polytechnic to study business. Okay, I was there like 10 years ago studying business at SAIT Polytechnic. Okay, so what is a polytechnic? Well, it's like a college except it focuses on uh, like practical careers. Careers, especially things you can do with your hands. Like if you want to become an electrician, right? Or a plumber, or uh, a barber, or a massage therapist. Okay, any of those kinds of careers uh, you will find at a polytechnic. Just practical careers, usually shorter programs, like one or two year programs. I mean, they might have four year programs as well, but most people who do a four year program, they go to like university, right? The average study time at a university is, is four years, right? Or maybe more, six years, eight years if you're going to become a doctor or something. But at these places, most people just study for one or two years. Okay, so here's the first option, massage therapy. Okay, the course is 16 months long, and it costs 7000 and the average salary that you make after graduation is 45000 and the class size is 25. Okay, so 25 people in your class, it's going to cost you 7000 and you can make maybe, I just made these numbers up, I'm not actually sure, okay? This isn't a real place. I just called it Markland Polytechnic because my name is Mark. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the next option. Hairdressing. 12 months, tuition is $5,000, average salary, $35,000, class size, 15. Okay, let's take a look at the last option. Photography. Hey, that's my favorite hobby. Six months, $3,000, uh, you can make $25,000 after graduation. Class size, well, it's online study. So it's just an online program. You don't actually have a real physical class that you go to, okay? So that's the information there. Now, some of these questions will be based on this information, okay? Not all of the questions, but some of the questions. Okay, so you need to take a look at this information and try to understand it. See what it says. There's going to be some comparison, right? There's going to be a letter here and someone is going to be talking about these different options and comparing them. So let's take a look at, at how this is, okay? So it says, hi Anne, I just saw this poster on a bulletin board do you know what a poster is? A poster is something with information, like we just saw, right? That's a poster. And a bulletin board is a place uh, where you pin the poster to. Usually colleges, universities, they have bulletin boards in maybe the main building, the entry of the building. You'll see a bulletin board with lots of different advertisements, student activities, or whatever, okay? So this person saw a poster on a bulletin board and thought I should send it to you. Okay. Have you thought any more about what your next step is going to be? Last time we spoke, you were considering hitting Europe for a few months. Hitting Europe. Do you know what that means? That means going to Europe. 
hitting uh, means going. For example, uh, you could say, let's hit the bar. Let's go to the bar and do some drinking. Or let's hit Mexico for the weekend. Okay, so you and your buddies, you go down to Mexico for a weekend, you hit Mexico. Okay, that's what that means. You go to. Uh, okay, so that would be awesome. I guess traveling has... I guess traveling has its pros and cons. Being broke at the end of the trip is probably... Okay, now here are our options. Being broke... Do you know what being broke means? That means having no money. Okay, you had money, then you did something, and then you went broke. You have no more money left. Okay, being broke at the end of the trip is probably the biggest pro, the biggest con, not going to happen, or not that bad. Not that bad. What does pro and con mean? Pro means advantage. Con means disadvantage. Okay, so is being broke an advantage or a disadvantage? Well, it's obviously a disadvantage, right? So the answer is the biggest con. Right? Being broke at the, at the end of the trip is probably the biggest con. Right? These options, like not going to happen, that doesn't really uh, make sense because, well, you know, if you're going traveling, you know, it's, it's very possible that you might come back broke. A lot of people do, especially after high school. They go to Europe, they spend all their money, and then they come back and they're broke. <laughs> right? Okay, not that bad. That's our last option. Well, being broke is always bad, so that doesn't make sense. So we know B, the biggest con, that's the right answer. Okay, uh, then we can keep reading. You might want to save up a bit before you travel. I think doing a short course like one of these would be a great way to get a job and save up. Okay, so she's saying that uh, it's might be it might be good to do one of the programs. Remember massage therapy or haircutting or what was the other one? I can't even remember what the oh photography. Okay, doing one of those short courses would be a good way to make some money. Well, first you have to study, then you get a job, make some money, then travel. Okay, that way, you know, if you come back, then you can get a good job. So that's what she's saying in this letter. Okay, um, then she says, Remember when we were kids and I would come over to your house to play with dolls? You always wanted to give the dolls... Okay, here are our options. Fancy clothes fancy hairstyles, a manicure, or a pedicure. Which one do you think? Okay, now this is a good example of train of thought. Train of thought, okay? So first she says, uh, I think doing a short course like this one would be a great way uh, to get a job and save up. And then she says, you would make a great hairdresser. You would make a great Hairdresser, that's the first thought. Okay, you would make a great hairdresser. Then, remember when we were kids and I would come over to your house to play with dolls? That's the second thought. Then what do you think the third thought is going to be? Right? She's recommending one of the courses. So, so why is she talking about being kids? Remember back when we were kids? What does that have to do with the, the different options? Well, what are the options? The options are either uh, massage therapy, hairdressing, or photography. Okay, so remember when we were kids and I would come over to your house to play with dolls? You always wanted to give the dolls fancy hairstyles. This is the only answer that fits here. It can't be A because fancy clothes, that doesn't fit with the train of thought, right? Um, a manicure, do you know what a manicure is? That means fingernail painting. And a pedicure is toenail painting. Okay, so it has nothing to do with that. The only answer is 
fancy hairstyles. So do you see the train of thought? We can predict what the answer will be uh, based on this train of thought. Okay, so let's keep reading. I think you would be great at massage therapy too. The downside with that option is that the course is longer, it costs more money, and... Okay, what's the third thing? So, the downside. You have to pay very careful attention to these words like downside, pros, cons, because that will help you evaluate which option is, is the best, okay? So the downside with massage therapy is that the course is longer, it costs more money, and what else? The salary is higher. Well, no, that can't be the answer because the salary being higher would be a good thing. So it's not, it's not that. Uh, the classes are smaller. It can't be that either because small classes are seen as a good thing. Okay, so this needs to be a bad thing, right? Uh, the class size is bigger, right? That's a bad thing, so that could be an answer. There is no vacation time. Well, it didn't say anything about vacation time, so we know C is the correct answer. The class size is bigger. So that's another downside of the massage therapy option. Okay, so let's keep going here. I think class size makes a big difference. I remember one of my university classes had a hundred people. A hundred people. Have you ever been in a class with a hundred people? I don't think I've been in such a big class, maybe like 50 people or something. Okay, so it was hard to make friends. So I would definitely recommend small class sizes. If you want to travel, photography might be a great thing to learn. The advantage it has over hairdressing is that the program is shorter and the salary is higher. Does that make sense? The advantage it has over hairdressing, advantage, right? So we're looking for advantages here. The salary is higher, so that could be an option. But if we look back at the information in the diagram, that's not the option because photography had the lowest salary. Okay, the salary is lower. That doesn't make any sense because we're looking for an advantage. The tuition is higher. No, that's not an advantage. You don't want to pay more money to go to school. Um, the tuition is lower. Yes, that's an advantage. So this is the correct answer. D goes in there. Okay, let's keep going. The problem with the photography option is that it's just online and you wouldn't get any hands-on experience with an instructor. Hands-on experience means real, in-person experience with an instructor, right? Another issue is that... Okay, so what is this? Are we looking for a good thing or a bad thing here? We're looking for a bad thing. Because this, well, the word issue means like problem. Another problem. She's already said the first problem. The first problem is that you don't get any hands-on experience. Okay, another issue is that uh, the salary is much lower than the other options. Is that right? Yes, if you look back at the, at the diagram, it is lower. So that's going to be the answer. Okay, let's look at the other options. The course takes less time. Uh, the course takes less time. Yeah, it takes less time. So that's a good thing, not a bad thing, right? She's saying another problem, right? Um, C, the tuition is lower than the other options. Well, that's a good thing. We're looking for a bad thing. You don't really need to take photos while you travel. Okay, that has nothing to do with anything. So sometimes, you know, on the exam, you might see an answer that just has nothing to do with anything. So you can, then you can just forget about it, right? Okay, let's keep going. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are, Julie. Okay, that's a nice letter to her friend. Okay, so let's take a look at some more questions here. Markland Polytechnic is a post-secondary institution, recruitment agency, company, or online forum. What do you think? Well, I already told you at the beginning of this lesson, 
It's a post-secondary institution. Okay, Julie and Anne are classmates, childhood friends, acquaintances, or uh, sisters. Are they classmates, childhood friends, acquaintances, or sisters? What do you think? Well, remember when she said, back when we were kids, playing with dolls? That's uh, a clue that it's childhood friends. Okay, they're childhood friends. That's the answer. Okay, Julie thinks money is important, the length of study is important, and should go traveling instead. Class sizes are important. Which one does Julie think is important? Well, we know it didn't say anything about the length of study, right? She didn't say, oh, you should do this one because it's shorter. She didn't say that. Um, Anne should go traveling instead. No, she didn't say that Anne should go traveling. She's saying Anne should wait for traveling. She should study instead. Um, money is important. No, she didn't say that money is important. So we know this is the right answer. Class sizes are important. Okay, so that's an example of task two. It's the same format. You're going to see a letter with like five questions and then there will be three other questions at the end. So task two only has eight questions. It might be the easiest out of the reading tasks if you're good at looking at a diagram. Sometimes the diagram can be a little bit intimidating. Don't worry, just relax. Take a look at it, see what it's saying, and try your best to answer the questions. Hey, that's train of thought. Did you know about this? Let me know down there. Did you know what this means? I think this is a very important concept. If you can understand this concept, you will be able to predict the right answer on the test. I think it will be much easier for you. Hey, if you like getting tips, like this, I'd be so happy if you subscribe to my channel right down there. And hey, if you want to pick up a copy of my book for yourself, you can just go to my website, metv.cool. Okay, I want to know. Write a train of thought in the comments. That's what I want you to do for homework. Write a train of thought. A train of thought is a few different thoughts, so probably like three sentences. Write three sentences down there that are a train of thought so that I can see if you understand this concept. Hopefully you understand this concept. Anyway, let me know down there and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.